Isn't it good to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. I, you must realize how welcome your faces are to me and how sad that I was that I had to miss those services. But to see you and what you worship is an encouragement that doesn't come from any other source. So God bless you and thank you for many things. Lately, I must thank you for your Christmas gifts that you give to me. And uh, I just kept opening them, and I couldn't hardly open one without hurrying, wanting to open the next one. <laughs> you know how children are. They're, they're in a hurry to, to get into them. And so uh, it was so very nice and so very generous of you to do that. I wonder if you tonight would sing my theme song for all of my ministry, I Need Thee, Amen. Would you do that with me tonight? Just a chorus. for the message that would come to us, our great God and our Father, how it is that we need you. We can't do anything by ourselves, how helpless we are. Our words are empty. All of our illustrations are without respect unless the power of God comes in and does something for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Tonight, you can't see it. I was hoping you could. But uh, on this platform or pulpit, I have the notebook, if you can see it. This is the book of Galatians. And Ephesians that likes just a little bit being finished. We would do a work. But uh, I wanted to bring it tonight because what I wanted to say to you is going to be brought from this uh, particular uh, uh, place. I can get it there. I got it. Thank you. Amen. You're getting old when you got to have a chair. But you're not that old when you can still move it by yourself. <laughs> Amen. And to think that God cares for us enough that He gives us His Word. And all of the years that I have been in the ministry, you are probably the only ones who understand most what it means not to be able to come to the 
pulpit and deliver what you feel in your soul. And at night, message after message builds within me. And yet, something happens after a time. It, uh, it doesn't stay with you. It fades away. Pardon me for doing I hate when they grab that mic and throw it aside. I like to deal with it gently. Amen. But uh, I have I have been studying and trying to reason with uh, the Word of God in a way that would be beneficial to me. But uh, Brother Ricky had to go to Houston with uh, wife and daughter for doctor's appointments, and so uh, here I am. I'm always here, you know me. <laughs> Thank the Lord. But I have a faithful church, and I tell you, there's no one that can, I say boast, no one who can thank God for a congregation like I can that worships God. And did I, I, I can't tell you without boasting how all over the world I receive calls about you and your worship. How do I get my church to be that way? And uh, of course I go through a program of, of what I've done through the years but the, but the truth is you love God. And that's that's the answer. You just love God. And anyone that has someone to guide them and direct them will find out that uh, they can worship God the same. Tonight I wanted to show you a, a book, that uh, a little book that was sent to me as a Christmas present from uh, what it was a... Superintendent of California, Brother Paul Price. How many remember him? Do you remember Brother Price? He sent me, and he sent me the sweetest note that you have ever seen in your life. He said that he would not be if it had not been for my ministry. And he goes on and on and on, and I feel so unworthy of the things that he is saying but I know that they're genuine. Now my problem is how to answer him and what to say to a man that in my life before, even as youth president of Louisiana, I wondered at the strength of this man and how the influence he had uh, to uh, work the people of God. But this... Uh, this gift is something else. And what it is is a book that deals with all of the universe or deals with the universe and pictures that go along with it when he talks about the sun or the wind. They have pictures. He has pictures that goes along with this. And uh, the technical uh, element that is also with it that describes how fast this is, how swift uh, sunlight is, etc., is uh, more than I can more than I can digest. But I kept reading and. Uh, the name of the book is How Majestic is Thy Name. And with all of this stars and moon and clouds and all of the universe together, uh, 
after every element that is presented, there is a thank you, Lord, a majestic application to the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God, praise God. Amen. And uh, I am thankful that I am in a world that I believe was made by God. I don't think anybody can look at this book and see what it says and and uh, believe that it was anything other than God that made this world. Amen. There's nothing that uh, nothing that could do it whatsoever. He talks about uh, number one the stars. And uh, the nearest star to us, Proximi, if I'm pronouncing it right, Centauri, is speed of light, take uh, uh, over four years to get to the earth. That is, if it had the speed of light, that's how far it is. It would take, with the speed of light, four years to get to earth. And it would take 280 centuries, it would take to uh, uh, to take what uh, let's say to, to get there. 280 years. But in other words, the distances are so far. He gives uh, it. Uh, this book gives the. A circle of the earth, a circle of all of the planets, how far they are apart. And you realize finally that nothing but God would be able to make a universe like this. And if there is a wall around space, what's on the other side of the wall except more space? And it takes God. I don't believe any kind of human or any other kind of being would be able to make these planets and these stars and these distances and keep them in order so that the sun shines when we need it. And it rains as much as we need it. He talks about rain. And if rain was not controlled, what would happen to the earth and to other planets? And it just makes me think that we have not praised God enough and we do not realize enough how great God is to control the entire universe. We're sitting in these pews tonight praising God and our mind is going back about 2,000 years to Christmas, to the first one, but I'll tell you that was only God when He decided to come in flesh and to show everybody what He really looked like. Amen. But if the truth is, sitting here tonight, we ought to realize we're serving a God that is so great that He is able to know all of our thoughts together. And He is able to judge them one by one. That's the reason we preach. That's the reason we tell you how you ought to be because we're not keeping score like man. Thank God we are under the hand and the mind of a God who fixed a star that's the closest one to earth that would take all of those many thousands of years at the speed of light to get here. And yet he handles all of this. He controls all of this. I say if he can do that, 
He can run my life. He can decide what's good for me and He can decide what's bad. Number two, He has spoken to special or different people and laid His message on their heart. That's what this book is all about. And tells you how to live and how to do. Praise God. Who knows the height, the Scripture talks about the breadth, the depth, the width. Who knows all of that except God? We have to give Him the praise for it. Amen. In this Scripture, I wanted to point out to you, if God is great, then I wanted to point out to you how great you are. Because you are made in the image and likeness of God. That is why it is sinful for you to D-A-M-N and to utter words against another one that God has made. We are all here by the grace of God. And we better keep our minds on that. Amen. And yet he talks about the heavens and you and I cannot go out and look up at night or whenever and and help but wonder at the distances we see and the tiny ones we see and how far they are and realize that God made them. But three times in this book he talks about huperorenus. That's Super heavenless. Above those that are above what you can see in the heavens. And he talks about how he dwells in the super heavenless. And he also talks about how that these heavenless are revealed by the church. When I am preaching to you about the glory and the power and the heaven, I'm preaching to you about higher than what you can see. It's going to take the grace of God for you and I to understand all of this. Amen. But the super heavenlies he says, are revealed by the church. There is no other source. If it had not been revealed to us that there was a God who ruled over all of these super heavenlies, then you and I would be believing this man down with a stick in his hand pointing at a blackboard telling us how things came to be and he don't know where he is. Amen. I'll tell you the truth. His Word is the only thing that we have that can point us to the truth of God. And it tells us of super heavenlies. And that not only shall we dwell with Him in those super heavenlies, But He lets them dwell in our hearts at different times. How many has ever felt the power of God until it was beyond anything you'd ever seen or felt before? I'm saying right now there are people here who know what super heavenly is. Because he said it is the church that's going to reveal them to the world. You know how you're going to reveal them? By your life. By your praise. By your honesty. By the grace of God that comes. Did you know there are people that wonder 
and are amazed when they see the kind of life you live? That's how people are one to God. And they would not be so had it not been for those who reveal such a thing before the Lord. Amen. And it says, you have these super heavenlies that are revealed by the church, but they are on the inward man of the child of God. This ought to help you tonight to know whether you pray enough or whether you love God enough or whether you've ever been in the Spirit like you ought to be. I'm telling you right now, I have been so blessed that I didn't care who was watching me or what was going on. I'm praising God and I'm worshiping God and I'm giving Him all of the glory. Hallelujah! I have felt like I didn't know whether I was here before or after. Thank God I was lifted up. The Bible talks about us being lifted up. He not only talks about the super heavenless, but he talks about the church will reveal the many-sided wisdom of God. There's many sides to the wisdom of God. He not only deals with science, he not only deals with technicalities, but he deals with the inner man. And you are supposed to be the recipient of one who knows how that God is many-sided. How many knows that he has dealt with you in different ways? at different times and delivered you when you didn't think that it was possible for Him to deliver you. Oh, praise God. I tell you, Christmas ought to be more than just Christmas. Amen. New Year ought to be more than a new year. I wonder what year this is to Him. I'm telling you that we serve a God that is mighty and who has all of this in his hands. Hallelujah to God. And he has made this known, this many-sided wisdom of God, he has made known to authorities and rulers among you. God has ministry that he has appointed and anointed and has set in place and demands of them a life of certain kind and if they're not they're not supposed to be one of the ministry amen I hate to hear folks fuss about rules and laws and so forth in the church hear me now we're not serving a God like the chief of police or a mayor. We're serving a God who reigns the universe, who has many sides to Him. And the only way we can see it is He deals with the inner man. That's the on the inside of us. And somehow, mysteriously and wonderfully, he has authorities and rulers whom he works with to deal with the inner man that's on the inside of you. Have you ever heard a message from the man of God that changed your life? Amen. Have you ever heard a preacher preach that brought you to an altar on your knees saying, God, I'm not fit to be your child. Forgive me. Oh, thank God. 
He wasn't a great preacher, the first one that came to me. He was over all clad. But there was with his, his heart a knowledge that nobody else could touch. Thank God he reached from himself to me and brought me, a Baptist minister's son, to an altar, crying and weeping. Amen. How many times has he done this for us? He's made known to us through these authorities. Also, the exceeding grace of God, the exceeding riches of the grace of God, is Hooper Ballo. That is, he throws the grace of God. Amen. It's thrown. And you know whether or not you can catch it. You know whether or not you can receive it. I'm sorry for people that don't know how to catch things. I've seen grown men that couldn't catch a ball. I've seen people who couldn't, uh, who couldn't grasp the idea of the smallest thing about them. But he throws the grace of God. What does that mean? That means that grace is so free. Grace is so open. Grace is so wonderful. Thank God that there's nobody that can't receive it if they want to. Hallelujah. The majestic voice of God is that voice that speaks to a man wherever he is and brings him to a place of repentance and service to God. Hallelujah. This is the call that comes to the inward man. Third chapter 19. According to the power that is working within us. All of this has to do with according to the power that is working in us. Now it's in some working hard. It's in others that it is not working as hard because they limit it. Amen. I've known men whom the grace of God was so great it was thrown to me. Literally thrown to me. Hooper Balo. Thrown to me and I had to catch it as it came my way and apply it to my heart and to my life. Oh, glory to God. And then he talks about there is extravagant language such as the unsearchable riches of God. This is in uh, the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is a spiritual book. It deals with these things. We should read it more. But the unsearchable riches of God, and he talks about an extravagant language. It makes you talk greater about God than you would ever be able to talk. It makes you be able to describe Him and reach further into language and expression than you would ever have in your entire life. All I'm asking is, God, help me speak the Word of God. Help me sing the Word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No wonder there are songs that do not reach us. They don't go to the depth of that language of God that's down in our heart. No wonder there are messages that don't reach us because the preacher can't go beyond the little story that he saw of the man walking down the street. No wonder is because he doesn't know anything about the extravagant language. I'm telling you, the problem is that we have made speaking in tongues light. 
Amen. And we have we have uh, equivalented it to somebody just getting mixed up. Not on your life. I have heard messages that came from God, men speaking in tongues, and without the interpretation, I knew God was talking to me. Hallelujah. Before the interpretation came, I was already convicted. I was already stirred. Thank God. This is the God that places one planet so far from the other that they don't all ball up and cause a mass explosion in the universe. This is the God that gives us everything on earth that we need. Amen. Is because He knows. He is a God that knows everything. Hallelujah. And he has, the Bible talks about he is super abundant. Ask and think. And the power that is waiting over us. I'm telling you, this abundance of God is either in your behalf or it's against you. Now with all that I described that God was relative to all of the planets and everything there is and how He directs us and how all is kept under control, how would you like this God against you? A God that makes burning stars Furnaces. How would you like this God against you who is able to destroy entire areas of the universe? I'm telling you right now, I intend to serve Him from now on. I don't know what you're able to do. I don't know what you're going to do about it. Thank God. Every service that I can, I want to lift my hands and I want to serve Him. God, you're bigger than I am. Hallelujah, God. You're bigger than my preacher. Oh, great God, you're bigger than the universe. Great God, you're big enough to describe everything there is. Amen. And I did not think about that until I received this book from Brother Price that describes rain, that describes when a tiny stone from another planet hits this earth and what kind of a hole that can make the distances and the powers the strengths that are in them I did not think about that but I think this book is named wonderfully How Majestic is Thy Name Do you know what controls all of this? As far as we are, it's the name. There is a name that is above every name. Hallelujah to God. And I don't have to go through it uh, as to language and uh, to parse it and give you the different parts of speech of the language. You know it as well as I do. Strange to us, strange to the world. But isn't it amazing that the world has to speak that name just in the time of the year that we have passed? Whether they like it or not, they say Jesus. They may be whatever kind of religion, wherever they are, but somewhere, someday, they're going to speak the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what, I'd rather speak that name and have it work in my behalf than speak it because he's got a whip over me making me say it. Hallelujah. What a majestic name that is. 
Will you pardon me for not being linked tonight? I'm going a long time here. Thank God. Oh, glory to God. And I'm pleased that God let me stand up or sit up here tonight and tell you about how great He is. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 How great He is! My God! You know as well as I do, there is no human, there is no scientist that's able to work all of this by himself. You and I know there is a God who is above all. Most of all, when I go to sleep at night, I can speak his name and I can feel him in my heart. The Bible talks he talks about the inward man. Do you know you've got an inward man? That's the man that makes you love him. That's the one that makes you curse him. But I'd whole lot rather be on the blessed side than on the other side. Let's sing a chorus before we go. Hear me, Lord. I'm little. Oh, I'm little. How I I'm not very Jesus. big. forget him. one thing that I left out and that is this the hoopahoranus the super heavens those several places that it's mentioned in Ephesians also talks about us sitting with him in the super heavenless us being with him in the super heavenless I'm on my way, I'm on my way, hallelujah, I'm not just going any place, I'm on my way, one more time before you dismiss, I want you to sing about how you love me.